a 16-point victory for South Africa in South Africa. The All Blacks just won from four tests in 2022. There's been so many words used to describe this performance. Lost, uh, missing confidence, rhythm and mojo. Issa Nathiwa, Mills Moliaina, how did you describe that performance? What did, what did you see out there? Well, first of all, another another week of hurt for the for Ian Foster and, and his team. Um, but definitely the better side won. You know, South Africa, the Springboks, what they went into this game and how they sort of performed, they they know their game plan. They know everyone's on the same page. Um, you know, tactically they were, they were sound, but I just love the, the way they went they went about their businesses. They won every sort of moment and it was almost like we were, we were kind of um, reactive as opposed to, you know, challenging, challenging the Springboks. So, um, yeah, look, another another hard week. It was a phenomenal occasion. Like you talk about a test match, uh, cooker pressure environment. The scene was set. The fans turned up. They showed up in numbers for South Africa. Everything was there, and the writing was on the wall. Um, you know, not a lot went right for the All Blacks, unfortunately, and probably highlighted a lot more deeper issues going on. But from a South Africa point of view, they they came and delivered and did that what they do really, really well, um, and created a great occasion, a great atmosphere. Yeah, when you look at South Africa, their biggest winning margin over the All Blacks in the professional era in South Africa. Are we in serious trouble? <laughs> look, look, the reality is uh, we're just over a year out from the Rugby World Cup. In the last six months, we've lost to the top three nations in the world. We've lost to France, we've lost a series to Ireland, and we've now lost to South Africa with another test to come in a week's time. How concerning is this? Oh, it's huge, isn't it? I, I think... There's no doubt, I mean, I mentioned it last week, there's no doubt in my mind, we've got the players. We've got some real talent there. What um, what I'm a little bit concerned about is how we're going to play this game. You know, how, what, what are we actually going out there and what sort of style are we actually looking to try and implement? We looked panicked, we looked rushed, um, and again, for another you know week in, um, in a row, we're, we don't sort of seem to understand what we're actually trying to achieve. There's so many little things that you could tweak or change um, but overall from a game plan perspective if, if it's not right <laughs> then you're all trying to fix something within it then then there's a lot of hurt probably still to come um, uh, before things sort of head in the right direction so are we in a you know world of hurt yeah we are absolutely and, and, and you're seeing it like the effort that's there they're not clinical they're not seeing then then there's the tunnel visions there they go i'm going to try even harder and the harder you try the harder you try to run things out but no one's sort of thinking okay what's what's happening here let's refocus as a as a leadership group and say well for the next five minutes which is a long time in test match rugby we need to start pinning the corners you know we've, we've lost the battle in the air now it's our turn to be really try and win that moment back and try and pin the corners and put some pressure on south africa what we've got is a team that's trying even harder and, and the more and the harder they try to run themselves out of trouble and on different pages the worse things get and then they turn things over Malcolm Marx is, is right on the block because the All Blacks are hesitant they're almost individualistic because they're trying so hard and then you know mistakes happen the momentum's gone before you know it you're, you're, you're under more pressure and so it's a team that's struggling for confidence um, and, and unfortunately as, as I said we've got x-factor players we can turn it around but our confidence levels are, are, are well down hard to watch isn't it it was hard to look at the stats this morning as well because it was completely one-sided the territory the position handling errors yeah look the, the the stats speak for themselves you know i saw a telling stat that Bowden barrett was probably our highest ball carrier mm. that's probably not a great sign when you're thinking about tactics you know but defensively um, from a set piece point of view from winning the meter and winning all those stats you know south africa completely obliterated the all blacks mm. um, and it was just so telling in the performance do we know our game plan i don't think we do I honestly don't think we do. I, I think that the heart and soul in that are there. Yeah. They're definitely trying, but I think there's a lot of confusion about, you know, where do we go to, you know, next and, you know, what do we need to change up on the day? Well, we're going to talk about tactics and coaching and player personnel a little bit later on. But first, we've got a team on the ground in South Africa. Justin Marshall was there with Skulk Berger. We've got the right man for the job here because this test match has been heavily analysed already, but... An area that was a speciality, speciality of yours was the breakdown. It's been a problem for the All Blacks, was in the Irish series and was again in this test match. Why are they losing that contest from your perspective of the All Blacks and why are the Springboks yeah. so very good? They knew Malcolm Marks was going to get over the yeah. ball, but they couldn't move him. 
Uh, Malcolm was outstanding. I don't think he was up for this one. It was his 50th. He's only started half the test matches he's ever played in. He had so much value, whether he's starting or he's coming off the bench. I think why it's so difficult to steal the ball against the, bo the box, because there's not a lot of passes happening on and we, we get gain line. So it's three forwards, goes to the normal man, they set it up. Whenever we do start offloading, you'll see the box also not as sharp as the breakdown. For me, the All Blacks is just a little bit too loose. And they try and play without the gain line. I think they're one of the few teams in the world that don't dominate gain line and still try to play around you. And you know the, sh the story. As soon as you start getting a leg chop, people are running away from their support. They duck inside, they fall with the ball inside. And then Malcolm Marks was just outstanding on the breakdown. So that's a little bit too loose from the All Blacks. And, and whenever the box defense is, is hard to play against, and it's their line speed, and their line speed doesn't stop like we mentioned before. They keep on carrying on. 10, 15 yards deep and catch you behind the gain line. But it started with a kicking game and the box bossed every single part of the kicking game tonight. What, what do you make of the makeup of this current back row that we are selecting? There was a lot of debate that maybe Scott Barrett may have played at yeah. six. Did you yeah. think that that would happen? I, I thought that might have happened this weekend because he's quite an explosive ball carrier. Um, and even though, you know, he's a lock at heart, we need, you need someone to go through the guts. Um, and we've got to throw it back to like a Jerome Kano of old. Against the box, he's going to front up for 80 minutes. Look, every single one of these All Black Lose forwards are great players. At the moment, you know, if anyone stands outside of Sevilla, sometimes it looks like a one-man band because he does a bit of everything. Um, you know, it's hard when, you, you, when you're captain in any side and you're probably not playing your best and you've got a lot on your shoulders, and I think that's where Sam Kane's at. Um, so it's quite hard to free yourself up because uh, that pressure to sit there. And it, it, I think it clouds your judgment on decision-making where the team's at within a game. And then our Kiro Yane, I think I'll pick for certain games, um, especially when he can dominate in the wide game, uh, uh, in the wide channels. He's like another back. Such a nice skill set. But against the box, I don't see him enough m mixing it with our big boys. And, and, and that's where you've got to fight fire with fire, I think, against this pop defence. OK, there you have it. Maybe some selections up for debate during the week. And breakdown is definitely a work on. Excuse the pun. Anyway, Scala, what you are over here is very good host. So I think we go get a braai and a beer. I'll get the beer sorted for you, both. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, fantastic work. Great to be able to get Skogberger's opinion as well. He's such a great analyst of the game. He talked about it. We knew it was coming. The physicality, the size from South Africa, fighting fire with fire, the script, it was written, and nothing changed. Why were we not prepared for that? You've got to bully a bully, and that's, yeah. that's what the South Africans are. They're huge men. You know, they're, they're massive men, and they love contact this is what they love and so when you go into a match there's a couple of ways you've got to win that physicality obviously you know one on one when you're tackling or when you're, when you're ball carrying you win that you win the, the game line but when also when you haven't got the ball that you're belting them and I, there's a couple of times we did belt them but it's got to be consistent it's got to be all all day long because they'll keep coming back but the other side of it as well is the set piece you've got to win the set piece battle because they love a set piece they love a scrum and things like that so when those things marry up and then you it comes back down to one little one little aspect. Well, you know we're, we're okay, you know, in the in the lineouts and the, the scrums. But when it comes back down to the brawn that you're talking about, you've got to win that. You've got to have a guy that when when the big South African boys are running around the corner and there's this guy that's standing up, i.e. Jerry Collins or Jerome Kaino, they don't want to run that ball straight and they want to do a little bit of footwork. And all all, all of a sudden, you've won that little bit of that, that battle. And so, I guess. It was, it's always there. Um, when Ian Foster picked his side, it was kind of like, okay, we're going to play a hard and fast game because of the players that he picked. We're going to get a little bit wider. But you can't do that unless you win the upfront battle first and foremost, and we just didn't win that.